Allah says, وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ And what Allah has given you in this world, use it to establish, to seek your home in the hereafter. But then Allah says, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Allah says, but don't forget your portion of this world. But what does that mean? First it means, أَيْ لَكَ نَصِيبٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا That you do have a portion of this world. You know, in a very interesting, authentic narration, the Sahaba, Ka'b ibn Uzzul anhu, he narrates that, he says, a man passed by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَرَأَى أَصْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مِنْ جَلَدِهِ وَنَشَاطِهِ This man, he was earning a living for his family. But in doing so, the Sahaba saw that he was energetic, he was strong, and he was very skilled at what he was doing. But he's earning a living for his family. And they said, If only this energy and this strength and this skill was used in the path of Allah. And you know what the Messenger of Allah said in response? He says, In kana kharaja yasa'a ala waladihi sigaran, fahuwa fi sabilillah. If this man came out, he's earning his living, but he's doing so with the intention of supporting his children, then he is actually in the path of Allah. And he says, وَإِن كَانَ خَرَجَ يَسْعَى عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْنِ شَيْخَيْنِ كَبِيرَيْنِ فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And if he comes out earning a living to support his two elderly parents, he is also in the path of Allah. وَإِن كَانَ خَرَجَ يَسْعَى يَعِفُّ نَفْسَى فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And if he came out, if for no other reason but just to make himself self-sufficient, so he's not on the street. He doesn't have family, he doesn't have kids, but just to support himself, then he is also in the path of Allah. What does in the path of Allah mean? It means, ay laka ajr. You're being rewarded for that. Every moment of earning a living, if your intention is pure, is actually ibadah to Allah. So you have a brother who's a mechanic and he's sitting under the car and it's cold outside and his hands are cold. He's feeling the pains in his fingers and he's struggling to get a rusted bolt off the bottom of the car. Every moment of that, every second of that action is actually ibadah. Somebody says, I don't want this dunya. I want akhirah only. I want jannah only. Islam tells you, if you want jannah, your vehicle for that jannah is this world. And you get rewarded for every moment as long as you have the right intention. So that's the first thing we have to understand. Number two, we have to understand a guiding philosophy and principle in the life of a Muslim. If you're an engineer, you're a teacher, you're a plumber, you're a mechanic, you're a physician, you're a lawyer, whatever it is in your field, Allah wants something from you and what? And that is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, كتب الإحسان على كل شيء. Allah has asked you and I that in anything that we do, we do it with excellence. Now you can't be an excellent doctor unless if you're a master of your specialty. You can't be an excellent teacher unless if you are a master of the topic that you are teaching. You can't be an excellent farmer unless if you are a master in agriculture. And so Allah wants you in every field that you pursue, don't just stop at the basics. Allah wants you to excel, to research, to test, to experiment until you come and expand your knowledge and you become a master of that and whatever feel that is that you're doing and by necessity when you do that society advances by necessity by you brothers and sisters living the life of a Muslim living the life Allah asked you to live by the principles Allah has outlined in the beautiful religion he has given to mankind you will by necessity advance society now someone might say brother you're going too much you're going too far let me share with you a very interesting hadith The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in Abu Dawood Nasai, authentic hadith, he says, Ya'jabu rabbuk min ra'i ghanamin. Allah is impressed, is delighted by a shepherd. Fi ra'si shadiyyatin lil jabal. He is in the head of a mountain, on top of a mountain with his flock. He's grazing his sheep. And what happens? The time for dhuhr comes in. The alarm goes off, it's salah time. And so what does he do? He says, Yu'adhinu bis salah wa yusalli. So he stops watching the sheep, and he makes adhan, and then he prays his salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, انظروا إلى عبدي هذا يؤذن ويقيم الصلاة يخاف مني Look, O angels, look at my slave. He makes a call to prayer and he prays, he fears me. And then what does he say? قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لِعَبْدِي وَأَدْخَلْتُهُ الْجَنَّةِ 
I have forgiven my slave and I have admitted him into paradise. Allahu Akbar. But let me ask you a question. Is there something strange about someone taking time off from work to pray? Let me ask you a step further. Who has it more difficult? The shepherd in the field who doesn't have anybody around him in the mountain? Nobody to look at him, nobody to catch him with his foot in the sink at work, nobody to criticize him. He doesn't maybe have a boss who hates Muslims. He's not under that pressure. Who has it more difficult, you when you leave your work for prayer or the shepherd when he prays? I think the argument can be made that you have it more difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this shepherd for praying. While doing his job in this world, while earning his living, he's forgiven him all his, all his sins and granted him paradise. So what would be the reward for you? So you see, Allah wants you to take care of your dunya affairs. But in doing so, you don't sacrifice what He has required of you of your, uh, from your religion, right? And so when you look in our history, what do we see? We see in Muslim society, when Islam, when religion, when religious teachings were flourishing, so were the secular sciences as well. We were the top in medicine. The first hospital in the world in Damascus was built 700 years before the first in Italy. Qurtuba, Muslim Spain, had 50 hospitals before the first was built in what we refer to as Europe. So the Muslims were excellent in the secular sciences and the religious sciences. That's what Islam asks of us. The cause is Islam and the result, the effect, is advancement for society. 